This video focuses on predicting the products of elimination reactions in cases when the electrophilic molecule contains two distinct sets of beta hydrogens. As in a case like this where the left hand beta carbon bears one hydrogen and the right hand beta carbon bears two hydrogens, base promoted elimination of HCl from this molecule could give rise to two isomeric alkene products. One involves the elimination of the methine proton along with chloride, resulting in the formation of this alkene. The other involves elimination of a methylene proton at this carbon, and this reaction pathway leads to a different isomeric alkene containing the double bond in a different position. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to predict the major product here, and more importantly, you'll understand the underlying principle at the heart of making this determination. It's an idea that we've seen before, more stable products are thermodynamically favored. Because elimination reactions often employ heat and long reaction times, thermodynamics is what governs the outcomes of these reactions, and there's a key thermodynamic principle at the heart of making this determination of the favored product in an elimination of a substrate containing multiple beta hydrogens. The key general principle to understand here is that more substituted alkenes, that is, alkenes with more alkyl groups linked to the sp2 hybridized carbons are more thermodynamically stable than less substituted alkenes. This image shows you the trend on an energy diagram where high energy represents low stability and low energy represents high stability. Ethylene, which bears no alkyl groups attached to the sp2 hybridized carbons, is the least stable of the alkenes shown here. As we replace the hydrogens of ethylene with alkyl groups, the stability of the alkene increases and its energy goes down. The most stable of all is the tetrasubstituted alkene, which lacks hydrogens entirely on the sp2 hybridized carbons. Its energy is actually implied on the x-axis of this diagram. You can imagine then that thermodynamically, if we came down to a reaction that was thermodynamically controlled, more substituted alkenes would be formed in preference to less substituted alkenes. If two competing reaction pathways, for example, two eliminations, could form either a monosubstituted alkene or a trisubstituted alkene, the pathway that yields the trisubstituted alkene would be favored, at the very least at long reaction times and high temperatures, which is the norm for base-promoted elimination reactions. We're going to apply this principle in drawing elimination products. And it comes up quite often because most alkyl halides have distinct sets of beta hydrogens that would lead to different alkenes upon elimination. Let's take a step back first though and talk about drawing elimination products in general. The process is analogous to drawing nucleophilic substitution process. For now we'll leave aside the question of whether substitution or elimination occurs and assume that we know an elimination reaction is occurring. First we identify the leaving group and the reactive beta hydrogen applying the principles on the last slide. It's also important to identify the base at this point and then engage the base in electron flow associated with the E2 elementary step. We've looked at this step before, and the introductory video to this series showed E2 type electron flow. We're going to worry about the E1 mechanism and carbocation rearrangements in a later video. In this general scheme, for example, we recognize X, which is some electronegative halogen or pseudo halide group, as the leaving group. To find the beta carbons, we move two carbons away from the leaving group and look for hydrogens linked to those carbons. Here's an example of the beta hydrogen. And identifying the base is usually a matter of separating an ionic compound into its component ions. For example, this base probably wrote along with an alkali metal cation like sodium plus or lithium plus. And then identifying the base as something strong enough to deprotonate this hydrogen, O minus, N minus, etc. E2 electron flow is rather unique in that it involves two distinct orbital interactions, an N to sigma star proton transfer type interaction, and a sigma to sigma star interaction really characteristic of the elimination process. This is an E2 elementary step. The most important product to recognize here is the alkene, because for example in a synthetic sequence or just a matter of interest to an organic chemist, this is the molecule that has the carbon, this is the organic molecule. The byproducts are usually of considerably less interest. But just to illustrate how electrons move here, one of the byproducts will be X minus, 
the conjugate base of the leaving group, just as in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. We'll also have the conjugate acid of the base, which here, because the base began anionic, is the neutral conjugate acid, HB. Again, though, the most important product here is the alkene. This is the organic product of a base promoted elimination reaction. Let's revisit this question of what happens in substrates with distinct beta hydrogens. Well, the rule here, quote unquote, is that elimination results in the formation of the most substituted alkene. This is usually how the so-called Zaitsev's rule is stated. Elimination is selective for the most substituted alkene. But the reason for this, the underlying reason, is that the most substituted alkene is the most thermodynamically stable product. Let's look at an example of applying Zaitsev's rule. In this substrate, we have two distinct sets of beta hydrogens, this methine hydrogen and these methyl hydrogens. Elimination of the methine proton would create a double bond between this carbon and this carbon. And upon drawing that product, we can see that the alkene is tri-substituted with three alkyl groups linked to the sp2 hybridized carbons, two ethyl groups and a CH3 group. What happens if we eliminate one of the methyl protons? Well, in that resulting product, which is isomeric with the one we drew initially, the double bond is now positioned here. And we can see in this product that the alkene is mono-substituted. There's only one alkyl group linked to the carbons involved in the double bond. Which of these is the major product? Well, the most substituted alkene is the most stable, and so the tri-substituted product is the most stable. Eliminations are thermodynamically controlled, and so the major or dominant pro product here is the tri-substituted alkene. And we should expect essentially none of the mono-substituted alkene under these conditions. More substituted alkenes are the preferred products in elimination reactions. Thinking about Zaitsev's rule from a general angle, using this idea of thermodynamic stability as what's really at the root of Zaitsev's rule, also helps us understand another issue of eliminations that you may not have thought of the issue of trans and cis products. Elimination of one of these two beta hydrogens would lead to a disubstituted alkene product. However, there are two possible disubstituted alkenes here. The trans product, which I've drawn here, and the cis product. In fact, the electron flow leading to both of these products is exactly the same. The only difference between them is stereochemical. We know from previous discussions that these molecules are diastereomers. They're stereoisomers that are not mirror images. And the cis isomer is somewhat less stable than the trans isomer due to steric interactions between these two methyl groups, which are relatively close to each other in the cis isomer, at least relative to the trans isomer, where they're quite far apart. Consequently, we can conclude that the trans isomer is more stable. And following Zaitsev's general rule that elimination produces the most thermodynamically stable alkene, we can conclude that the trans product will be favored in this process. And indeed, if we actually ran this reaction, we would find that the trans isomer dominates heavily over the cis isomer. The trans isomer is the major product.